Okay, so now that we've uh, spoken about the uh, pleasure principle, and hopefully you understand uh, the concept clearly. So let's take a look at, at some of the ways that we connect to our customers. And certainly, um, when we use the connect, the word connect, rather, I think it's reasonably safe to also use the word communicate. So I want to talk to you today about um, communication through the medium of advertising so that we can appreciate uh, how we apply the principles of ethical management to the vehicle of advertising as part of the way that we connect and relate to the customer. Now on a simplistic basis, advertising is just a way to communicate between people who want to buy stuff and people who have stuff to sell. Instead of word of mouth, which is one person talking to the next person, it's a form of communication that has a very wide uh, reaching uh, scope and allows the buyer, excuse me, it allows the seller to engage a much bigger portion of his target market than if he would try to basically talk to each person one on one. Now, today, it's an amazing weapon for business because we have all kinds of new mediums, the most significant of which are, are obviously social media and digital marketing. Today, with social media, a, a, a seller can connect immediately with a buyer uh, in real time, have a whole discussion, and, and make the sale. And by the same token, social media has given the buyer a tremendous uh, tool uh, that allows them to rate and to evaluate the integrity uh, and ethical behavior of the seller. And we see that in all those little ratings and, uh, and comments that the buyers uh, leave. So it's a very dynamic and fluid environment. When we are communicating with a customer. There is kind of like a spectrum of communication that we have that runs from simple persuasion, where we're trying to make the case for our product, to coercion, where we are trying to intimidate the buyer to buy the product. You, <coughs> you can kind of sometimes see it, there are these commercials now um, on TV for uh, for these uh, uh, companies that sell cars on the internet and they have all of these scenarios where the person has gone into the used car showroom and he's really being coerced and forced to sign a contract and buy the car or you don't get the deal today at this minute. So we understand that that concept definitely exists. From an ethical perspective um, we can move along that same continuum. When we use persuasion, what we are trying to do is communicate with the seller, or sorry, with the buyer, uh, about the features and the, um, and the important things that our product has. But as products become more and more homogeneous and we can't tell the difference between them, so you'll see that the marketing and the communication tends to move along that, um, uh, that continuum and kind of swing into that uh, zone of coercion. And I'm going to cover that example in a story I'll tell you um, about uh, Quaker Oats. When, once we get a little further on, you'll see what I'm talking about. So we are trying in our communication that... Uh, to, to allow the customer to make a free will choice while at the same time getting our message out there. So we are trying as a concept in principle not to manipulate the situation. However, there's a tremendous danger in that happening. First of all, if you understand what my pleasure button is, your messaging is going to be targeted towards that pleasure button because you understand that's the reason why I buy stuff. 
So if I'm buying a product for a lifestyle uh, connection, you're going to feature that lifestyle in your uh, communication to me. And the question is going to be, is that some form of manipulation? Are you using my psychology basically against me? Um, so we'll have to see how that plays out and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. The danger, of course, is that we don't appear to be coercive and because that will, if it comes back against us, especially now with social media, that will damage the brand. So uh, hopefully you can understand that as we move along the spectrum and we're moving from persuasion to coercion, there is this giant gray area in the middle and it's something you have to be cognizant of because again, because of social media, because the of the fluidity of communication, we have to be very careful that when we present our story to the customer, it's transparent, it has integrity, it's honest, and it doesn't appear to be um, manipulative. Um, or as they might say, fake news. So there are two ways that we can subtly abuse the consumer uh, relationship that we have. These are called, one of them is called assumption and the next one is called technique. The use of assumption is reaching deep into the psyche of the person and understanding those things that um, they don't even understand about themselves on a surface level. For example, youth is considered something good by our society. Um, a certain size is considered beautiful and other sizes on either side of that, whether greater or lesser, are not considered beautiful. Those are subtle things. They're not spelled out and they're not necessarily even a part of the, of the, of the produced message. Um, therefore, by assumption, what happens is if I present my product as being youthful, if I present my product, if it's makeup, for example, as not giving you wrinkles, as making you beautiful, and I show you pictures of people that are in the weight range that is considered to be beautiful, or the color range that's considered to be beautiful, or however you want to understand it, I am manipulating you through a technique that is called assumption. Because you believe that in order to be beautiful, you've got to buy this product that I'm selling, whether it's clothing, makeup, uh, a location, you know, a vacation lo locale. There are many different ways that we can use this type of assumption. Um, you know, back in the 50s, they used to have models sitting on top of cars. And since most of the cars were targeted towards young men between the ages of 25 and 45, there was this assumption that if you bought that car, you'd end up with a girlfriend that looked like the girl that was sitting on the car. Uh, probably never happened, but there was an attempt to communicate to you using this methodology called assumption. And that would be considered unethical because your product doesn't provide the girlfriend. And, and therefore, the suggestion that it does is a problem. The other um, technique of advertising that, uh, that, is, that is used is something that's called technique. Now, technique is basically telling you and connecting two unrelated ideas uh, which you think are connected. And in that connection, in that conflation, uh, they misrepresent the product. And I'll give you my classic story, and then I'll give you a few others. Quaker Oats 
has an instant cereal that they sell, all different flavors. And um, I'm, in the, I'm in the grocery store, I go by the aisle. I normally don't buy it because it has so much sugar in it. But I see that, the, that now uh, they've got this giant, uh, on the packaging, giant banner that reads one-third less sugar. Now that makes a big difference for someone like me who's trying to avoid eating sugar. So I say, you know what, i got to get it. I love the taste of this, and now I can have, uh, you know, this included in my, in my uh, breakfast. So I buy the uh, cereal, I get it home, and my wife looks at it, and she says, uh, let's see what's in the, uh, closet, in the cupboard, because I think we've got some of the stuff there. And yeah, sure enough, we've got a package. She looks at both of them. She says, uh, you see a difference between the two of them? I, you know, I'm looking at Quaker Oats. Uh, apple and you know apple and cinnamon flavor apple and cinnamon flavor I don't know they both look exactly the same to me I don't see the difference so normal response from her is look more closely not gonna help but I look more closely I still don't see the difference she says look at the packaging size Ooh. the original package was 345 the new package was 228. Of course there's a third less sugar. There's a third less food in the package. That's called advertising by technique. It's deceptive and all of that product was by the way removed from the store shelves and it's terrible for a brand because once that becomes known the trust factor for the brand diminishes. Um, there was a, another case like that with uh, Natrell. Natrell makes milk, which is a pretty homogeneous product. They had a giant uh, um, banner going across their milk cartons that said many times less bacteria. So the minute the average customer hears the word bacteria, uh, that frightens them because nobody wants bacteria in their, uh, you know, in their food. And many times less bacteria makes it appear as if there's something unique about their milk uh, that's way better than any other milk because Certainly they have many times less bacteria compared to other milk. The reality of the case was that the Natrell milk was 97% bacteria free because you need some minimal bacteria in the milk to make it healthy. And the competition, which means all the other milk companies, were 96.7% less bacteria. So the difference was 0.3 tenths of 1%. How does that become many times? That doesn't seem like it's even significant. And the end result in their case was that they were obliged, they paid a fine to the government for misrepresentative advertising, and they were obligated to have all of that packaging returned to them, and the packaging was destroyed and the milk inside obviously couldn't be recycled and so it was destroyed. So you can see that these uh, attempts to communicate using uh, subtle techniques at the end of the day they don't they, they, they don't really work effectively and they don't really protect the brand and especially today with social media and with the ability for people to communicate virtually immediately um, it becomes a very wise choice on the part of the seller to be careful that all of the advertising and communication that they have is far more transparent and far less subject to misunderstanding We want to be sure that people have the ability to make real free choice 
and that they are not being coerced or unduly affected, especially vulnerable groups with children in some cases and the elderly in other cases. There was a case in uh, Quebec of an insurance company who um, were trying to sell insurance and uh, they, it was a, they were using telemarketing as their methodology and basically the uh, promotion that the insurance company had come up with was that if you buy three of their products together you would get one third off the price of the three products. So they had one of their representatives that was working there and he was calling people up and he saw that with many of the people he called it was difficult to explain to them what one third off meant because many of them didn't really grasp math easily and they just didn't understand. So he simplified it for them. He said look if you buy two you get one free. That's pretty simple. It's the same thing as getting one third off, but people were listening to buy one, buy two, get one free. All the calls from, the, from all telemarketing, of course, are monitored, and when his supervisor heard that conversation, she called him into the office and she said, uh, you know, I realize that you're producing tremendous results. He, his sales shot up like 48%. But she said, um, you can't keep doing that because you're misrepresenting the product to the customer. He said, what do you mean? It's costing them exactly the same. If they would have spent $30, let's say 10 bucks for each one of the different products we sell, so we're giving it to them for 20 That's the same as buy two get one free and they don't understand one third off it's a whole complicated explanation and they don't get it at the end anyway she says I hear you but please understand that when the customer gets the bill and they're only gonna see a one third off so they're gonna see that they're being charged for all three insurance policies and only at the bottom of the page where we calculate the amount due are they gonna see the one third reduction and since they're already having a problem, as you've explained, understanding what that means, they're going to feel as if they're being charged for something that they were told was free. And naturally, since it's an insurance company, um, that will appear to them to be a violation of trust between us and them. And then the end result will be that all the sales you've made will be cancelled because they'll feel that we misrepresented the product to them and so we don't want to have that issue. So uh, communication with your customers as you can see is critical, it's important and especially in today's marketplace according to the um, strategy that you employ you have to make sure that your communication is transparent and ethical.